fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Prisoner Joe Fenton stood before the warden of Territorial Prison and sullenly listened as the warden spoke. Fenton, your prison term ends today. Yes, sir. I hope you've learned that the life of an outlaw is a dangerous and a hopeless one. An outlaw has no friends. Is the target for everyone's bullet, and sooner or later ends up in prison or on the gallows. Have you ever thought of that? Not too much. Take my advice, Fenton. From now on, go to work at an honest job. Regain your place among your fellow men and enjoy life. You're young yet, and there's a lot ahead for you, if you take my advice. I'll get along. One more thing. Yes, sir? You were a member of Corey's gang, weren't you? That's right. I understand that before you joined the gang, Corey and his men robbed the Seton Bank of $20,000. The cash was never found. What's that got to do with me, Warden? Only this. You saw Corey often here at the prison. If he told you where that loot is hidden, it'd be to your advantage to tell the authorities. Why should he tell me? Corey died here not long ago. You'd been captured with him. It'd be natural for him to tell you about that cash when he knew he was going to die. I don't know anything about it. That's all you have to say? That's all. All right. Good luck, Fenton, and goodbye. The guard will take you to the front gates. A short time later, the big gates closed behind Joe Fenton. To you. Said he'd like to see you. I'm to bring you back with me. I don't get this at all. Ah, forget it. Be glad you have a horse and a gun. I'll explain more on the way. Come on, let's get away from here. Might as well. Steady, boy. Come on, get up. Get up. The two men rode the trail near Rocktown at a leisurely pace. When we get to Rocktown... We'll meet Dave and the others. They'll be expecting us, Joe. I don't get it, bud. I come out of prison and found you waiting. 
You told me Dave Jeffers sent you to meet me and bring me to see him and his gang. Well, he's heard about you, and he knew I know you, that's all, Joe. Maybe he wants you to join the gang. I've heard plenty about Jeffers, and I'm suspicious. Suspicious? What do you mean? You know Jeffers ain't the type to send me a good horse and gun without reason. Now, listen. I told you he heard about you even before I mentioned your name to him. Stop worrying. Get up there. Come on, boy. Get it. In a hideout cabin not far from town, Dave Jeffers and four of his gunmen were discussing Joe Fenton. The fellow Bud is bringing is Joe Fenton, who just finished a stretch in prison. Uh, ever meet him, Dave? Is he going to join the gang? Oh, I never met him, but I've heard a lot about him. I do figure on taking him in with us. And I have a good reason. Yeah, what reason, Dave? Fenton was a member of the Corey gang. He and Corey were the only ones to survive a gun battle with a posse. They went to prison and Corey died there two years ago. Go on. It was never proved, but folks were reasonably sure the Corey gang robbed a Seton Bank a few years ago. The cash, close to 20000 was never recovered. I have an idea Corey hid it someplace. And I figure Fenton knows where it is. Oh, He'd be a fool to go after it right away. He might be watched for a while. Meantime, he'll need cash until he's ready to get that bank loot. Yeah, oh, while he's with us, I'll find some way to learn the hiding place. We'll grab the bank loot and do away with Fenton. About an hour later, Bud arrived with Joe Fenton at the hideout and stood facing Dave Jeffers. I suppose you wonder why I sent Bud to bring you here. That's right. I could use another good gun slick. Thought you'd want to join us so as to get on your feet. Well, I, I reckon I could use a job right now. And you have one with us if you just say the word. Sure. Well, on, to go. tell the truth, I was thinking of heading down San Antonio way and looking around a spell before I decided on joining with anyone. Mm-hmm. Any particular reason for wanting to go down there, Fenton? No. I just thought I'd get away from this territory for a while. All right. Join us. We'll all head south. How's that suit you? Well, Come I don't... Come on, Joe. It's no use putting it off. It'll get you on your feet again in no time. All right. Good, good. Mighty glad to have you. You keep the horse and gun I sent you. Later, when you have plenty of cash, you can pay for them. Well, that's all right with me, Dave. Thanks. Oh, well, now it's all settled... We leave here in the morning and head south like Joe wants. A month later, Jeffers' gang was becoming notorious in the territory near San Antonio. They had committed several robberies and managed to lose their trail each time. Joe Fenton worked with the gang, but so far had given no indication that he had come to that territory to get the hidden bank loot. One day, while Joe Fenton was in town with some of the other gunmen, Dave Jeffers discussed the subject with Bud and Sam. We've been around here a month now, but Fenton hasn't made a move to go get that hidden cash. Yeah, that's right. Why not throw out a hint? A hint? Yeah. Tell him a friend told you about some hidden bank cash that was stashed away near San Antonio, and that you wonder how to locate it. That ought to make him go after it in a hurry. Yeah, that's a good idea, boss. Yeah, yeah, it is. I'll try your plan. That night, when the others had returned from town to the hideout in the hills, Dave Jeffers brought up the subject of the hidden loot. Oh, man, we've pulled several jobs, but by the time we divvy the take, it didn't amount to much. You remember that friend I told you about who was in prison? Yeah. He told me he heard about a large amount of stolen cash that's hidden somewhere near here. Don't know who hid it, but it seems a man who did is dead now. Yeah, what about it, Dave? Oh, I figure it's worth trying to locate that cash. Didn't you hear about it while you were doing your stretch, Fenton? Nope. That's strange. Yeah, There's nothing strange about it as far as I see. If a fellow heard something like that, he wouldn't be likely to blab it all over the place before he had a chance to go hunt for the cash. That's right. I know I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd sure like to find that dough. I wonder how much there is. I heard there's about 20,000. Uh, that'd be almost 3,000 each if we could find it. If we could find it. That's the problem. That 
That evening, about sundown, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, stopped in a clump of cottonwoods. Oh, sure. oh easy. Easy, oh, easy, scout. Easy, scout. We'll camp here for the night, Tonto. Uh-huh. It's not far from San Antonio. Uh, King Wasabi. Yes? Why U.S. Marshal in Austin ask you come here? An outlaw gang has been operating in this territory, Tonto. The sheriff in San Antonio hasn't been able to catch them. The uh, marshal gave me a note to the sheriff in case we need help. Gang must have smart leader. Yes. We'll start early in the morning and try to find the gang's hideout. The horses will be well rested by then. Later, the moon shone brightly. At the gang hideout, two of the men had gone to town. Dave, Sam, and Bud were playing cards while Joe Fenton lay on one of the bunks. Yeah, beat that if you can. Yeah, I can't do it, Dave. Uh, neither can I. Yeah. I think I'll ride to town and find the others. Yeah, it's too warm to sleep. Better get back early, Joe. We're leaving at dawn to search for that hidden cash. I, uh, I don't expect to be going long. I'll see you later. Follow him, Sam. This may be what we're waiting for. Right. At their camp, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had turned in for the night. Suddenly, the masked man sat up as... Tonto, did you hear that shot? Uh, me here. Quickly, the two men rose and hurriedly saddled Silver and Scout. Uh, think... All right, you ready, Tonto? Uh, you ready? The shot came from up trail. Let's go. Easy, Silver. Easy, Scout. Easy, fella. Mon Silver! Come on, Sam had followed Joe Fenton into the hills and saw him go into a small cave and waited until Joe started back along the trail carrying a bag. Then he shot him from ambush. A few minutes later, Sam took the cash and put it into his saddlebag. Then he returned to make sure Joe was dead. As he leaned over Fenton, he heard fast hooves approaching. Hey, somebody coming. I better beat him before they get here. Get him back. Come on. Get him. Get him. Him still breathe, Kim Sabi. Yes, but he's very badly wounded. Uh, I'm done for. He took the bank cash. Easy, fella, easy. Who did it? I, I heard him leaving it. It was Sam. Outlaw with Jeffers gang. They hide out it. Him gone, King Sabi. Yes. You mentioned bank cash and an outlaw named Sam of the Jeffers gang. That must be the gang we came to hunt, Toto. Ah. And what we do? Put the body on his horse and take it to town, Toto. Wait. Take this note to the sheriff to identify you and ask him to bring a posse to search for the gang's hideout. I'll leave a clear trail so that he can find me. Then we'll join forces. Here. Ah. Me go pronto. Sam soon arrived at the hideout. All the men were there waiting for his return. Well, Sam, what happened? Did he go where the stolen loot was hidden? Yeah, he sure did, Dave. Uh, did you get the cash? Not Ben. The truth is, I waited a short distance away while he went into a small cave in the ridge. Uh, then what? Well, he came out and started down the trail. Suddenly, a couple of hombres appeared and started shooting. Joe Fenton fell, and I beat it before they shot at me. They must have taken the cash. Someone else must have been trailing them all the time. Maybe it was the law. By thunder, Sam, you better be telling the truth. Well, come on with me and I'll show you where he fell. You ought to find the hoof marks of the horses the killers rode. Yeah, nice. All right, we do just that. But if we don't find things as you say, Sam, you'll get a bullet. Remember that. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. Dave Jeffers' gang left the hideout and rode up the trail. At the same time, Toto was moving down trail toward town with the body of Joe Fenton. As he rode around a bend, he came face to face with the gang. Hey, Dave, look. That redskin has Joe's body. Cover him, everybody. Right. Pull up, Indian. He must have been one of the men who shot him. Yeah, he must have taken the cash. Indian, what are you doing with the body of our friend? We find him on trail, dead. Me take him to sheriff. He's lying, Dave. He's one of the killers. Joe was carrying a lot of cash, and they must have known about it and took it. I right. sure. Me not lying. Who else was with you, Indian? Me and friend, fine body. Yeah, where is he? Me not know. Him look for killer. Where's the cash the dead man was carrying? A feller who kill him take it. That means you and your friend, Indian. Where's that money? Me not know. Now nah, we're wasting our time. Take his guns, bud. Right. Got him. Now we'll take him to our place and question him some more. That's right. Get going, Indian. Get him up. Scum. Don't forget we're all holding guns. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. The Lone Ranger found that Sam had covered his tracks well. After trying to find them for some time, he turned back, hoping to meet Toto with the sheriff and the posse. (laughs) Meanwhile, the gang arrived at the hideout and took Toto inside after searching his saddlebags. Well, the cash isn't in his saddlebags. He knows more than he's telling, Dave. I'll search him. Uh, Let's see. Hold still. Yeah, here's something. Uh, looks like a note. Mm, sure. Hey, listen to this. Yeah, well, what's it say? It says, Sher- Sheriff Day. This will introduce the masked man known as the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend, Tonto. They've come to help round up the outlaw gang you wrote me about. Mm. It's signed John Lewis, United States Marshal Austin. Holy oh, smoke! I've heard of that masked man. Yeah, so have I. He and this redskin work with the law. Dave, they must have been trailing Joe Fenton ever since he got out of jail so as to find that bank cash. Reckon they shot him when he tried to get away with it from the cave. Well, it's a good thing they did. He might have led him right here to the hideout. We not shoot Fenton. We not get money. Who did get it? Come on, Indian, tell us. Toto hesitated. He looked sharply at the outlaw Sam, and remembering what the dying man had said, realized Sam was the killer and the one who had taken the cash. He also realized it would be dangerous and perhaps useless to accuse Sam at that time. I said tell us. Me not talk. Tie him. Maybe we'll be able to beat the information out of him, including where the mask man is, so we can go after him. All right, come on, Indian, I'll tell you Lone Ranger rode to town, and not having met the posse he expected, he left Silver in the shadows behind the buildings and entered the sheriff's office. I I expected you to meet me with a posse after you received my note and the message, Sheriff. What are you talking about, Pete? Who are you? Now, wait a minute. Didn't an Indian named Toto bring you a note along with the body of a man? The body? Note? Yes. What the intonation is this all about? What kind of a trick are you trying to put over on me? I'm not trying to put anything over on you. If the Indian didn't come here, it'd mean Never mind, Ted. Just keep quiet. Charlie, come here quick. Holy mackerel, Al. What's his game, Sheriff, coming right into your office like this? We'll find that out later, after we disarm him and put him into a cell where he belongs. Before you try to disarm me, Sheriff, look at the bullets in my gun belt. Well, I'm looking. Take one. Look at it closely. All right. Gee, this is a silver bullet. Yes, that's right. My horse is a stallion named Silver. My Indian friend is named Toto. He rides a paint called Scout. Does any of that mean anything to you? Silver bullets? Scout? Silver? Gee, hold on. You aren't telling me you are the Lone Ranger. That's right. Well, maybe you are, maybe you're not. Come out the back door with me and I'll show you my horse. All right. Come on, Charlie. All right, but I'll still keep him covered. There he is. Man, alive. Look at that stallion and that riding gear. 
Well, only the Lone Ranger has a horse and gear like that. Hey, I believe you now, mister. Let's get back inside. Yep, now I know you're the Lone Ranger. Deputy, uh, this man helps the law. He's all right. I've heard of him. Now, mister, what did you come to see me about? Now listen closely and I'll tell you what happened. Briefly and quickly, the masked man related what had happened. When the sheriff heard that Tahoe had started to town with a body and note, he said... But he never came here. Something must have happened to him. It may be that he was intercepted by some of the outlaws. Tahoe may be in danger of his life, sheriff. We'll have to move fast. I'll get a posse together. Then we'll try to find Tonto and the gang. As the Lone Ranger rode toward town, he failed to check Scout's hoof marks, believing Tonto had gone on ahead of him. Now, when he left with the sheriff and his men, the masked man kept his eyes fastened on the ground until he found the place where Tonto had been met by the gang. <laughs> Now look, Sheriff, okay. there are the hoof marks of Toto's horse. There are special marks on his shoes. He stopped here where there are tracks of other horses. Yes, and it looks like they turned around here and rode along with the Indians. That's right. We'll turn and follow those hoof marks. Come on, Silver. Get up, get up. At the hideout, Toto sat tied to a chair. Dave stood over him, trying to get information. Now, Indian, if you don't want me to beat the daylights out of you, you better answer. Savvy? Me not knowing nothing. Oh, maybe this will help you to remember. <laughs> you not do that. Never mind I'm that. Not tied. You'll get worse if you don't speak up. Where's the masked man? Me not know. Tell me what you did with that cash you took from Joe Fenton. Me not see cash. Not know about it. Sneaking redskin. Tell the truth! Oh. Ah, it's no use, Dave. We better get rid of him. Yeah, I reckon you're right, Sam. We'll take the Indian and Joe's body to the river and get rid of him. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and the Sheriff's posse followed the trail left by Tonto and the gang. Soon they reached the top of a hill. Oh, 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 oh. Look, Sheriff, yeah. down there in the hollow. That cabin must be the hideout we're searching for. But, Jiminy, I think you're right. If they hear us coming, they're bound to put up a fight. In fact, they may do away with your friend Tonto. What do you think we ought to do? He's just had a big fellow. We'll leave the horses here among the trees, Sheriff, and go quietly on foot to the cabin. It's all right. <coughs> this month, Henry. Now, men, be careful. Now, let's go. At the cabin, the outlaws were preparing to carry out their plan to get rid of Tonto and Fenton's body. Sam, untie the redskin's feet and get him off that chair. And we'll rope him to his horse for the trip to the river. Right. Better keep him covered. He may be tricky. I will. Well, Indian, you'll soon be aware you can't cause any trouble. Tonto heard the signal, the hoot of an owl, and realized the Lone Ranger had found the hideout. As Sam pulled him to his feet, he quickly glanced through the window. For a brief instant, he caught a glimpse of the masked man's face. The Indian thought quickly, then spoke. Wait. Me tell you where Cash is. Well, now you're coming to your senses. Yeah? Where is it, Redskin? When we find feller on trail, him not dead. Him live to tell who shot him and take cash. That's another lie. Why do you say that, Sam? Let him talk. Him say outlaw named Sam. What? Oh. Take cash and shoot him. Wait. At Toto's words, the other outlaws turned toward Sam. But Sam, in a rage, drew his gun. You can't accuse me and get away with us. Oh, no, you... No! Look, the masked man. Gun him. Got the gun. No! I'm hit. And the rest of you reach. Quick. Hey, men are all the windows. Well, we better do as they say. Yeah, we're caught it. All right, get the gun, Spiel. I'll cut you loose, Toto. There, you all right. Uh, Which one is Jeffers? Him, yeah. Jeffers. Yeah, we should have killed you right off, Indian. Lucky for you, you didn't, Jeffers. Then get ready to throw dead man and me into river, Kimasabi. You'll all hang for murder. No, no, Sam's the one who shot Fenton. Then he took the cash and was holding out on us. You sent me to waylay him, Jeffers. You're all in on it, and you'll all go to jail. What's that cash you're talking about? I'll tell you, Sheriff. 
Benton knew where the gang leader, Corey, hid 20000 He stole from a bank a few years ago over in Seton. I remember that robbery. The stolen loot was never found. Well, it's most likely out in Sam's saddlebags right now. This is the black horse behind the cabin. Deputy, what not sheep it's here? Oh, if it hadn't been for that masked man and Indian, I'd have gotten away with it. You sneaking double-crosser. We'd have found out sooner or later. The wounded men were soon bandaged. Then all were tied for the trip to jail. Here's the bank case, Sheriff. Good. I'll notify the Seaton Bank it's been found. You and Tonto are the ones they'll have to thank, mister. And I'm sure thankful to you for leading us to Jeffrey's gang, too. Well, we're glad to be of help, Sheriff. Well, you have enough men to get these crooks back to town. Yep. And Fenton's body will be evidence against him. And there'll be plenty more, too. How do now go report to the marshal in Austin? Adios, everybody. Adios. Uh-huh. Well, Jeffers, you and your men are not as smart as we thought you were. Otherwise, you wouldn't have tangled with the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.